So I think it's clear that you've stumbled onto some amazing truths and are really looking at the sort of largest level of reality from the perspective of, of the universe as I call it. You can choose to call it whatever you want. Um, ultimate rationality of objective science, physics, whatever. But here's the thing. From the largest perspective, the universe doesn't give a damn about the human race. And ultimately, our existence in the long run will mean very little from the scope of trillions of years, if not more, you know, basically at the level of the lifespan of the universe and all the things in it. So when you're looking at it from that existential point that really our individual lives are meaningless and the human race is meaningless, in fact, the whole of Earth, honestly, scientifically, you know, other than it's somewhat rare in the universe um, in comparison to other types of planets um, that may be approaching a level of universal significance, but honestly, that's a major realization that can bring us to a level beyond our own personal psychology, our own morality, and our own psychological need to feel special. So, I want to highlight the intelligence and the wisdom of existentialists and a lot of Eastern philosophy and learning focuses on this problem. What do we do once we know that our individual egos, our individual minds are really insignificant in the greatest scope of, of the world and the universe? Well, that's the magical moment. That's the moment that matters. Once we get to that point where we can honestly look into the mirror and admit that we're not really that important and special, that's when we can actually create, that's when we can actually own our unique position in the universe. That's the paradox. That's what a lot of Eastern philosophy focuses on, Eastern philosophy and religion. It's that once you realize how unimportant you are and insignificant you are, is when you actually get the true value of what a rare situate in circumstance that you are in this universe and the human race. In fact, the entire planet Earth in itself is a rare gem. So you've got this meaningless life in the scope of the universe. Why not make it the best possible? Why would you make it the worst possible? I want to go back at this point and revisit this question about being productive and efficient. And I'm really not sure what the impetus is to be productive and efficient. Um, because once you start looking at that and that type of rationality, that actually gets back to are you serving your genetic code, which is installing and is basically the software hardwired into us to produce, to reproduce, to increase, that can, that all goes back to biology. That all goes back to um, genetic warfare. That uh, goes back to Darwinism, social Darwinism, all of those things that I think at a human level we've decided should not determine our daily actions, choices, and morality. Because when we do um, take that objectivist point of view, um, 
that's actually when society seems to function least. Um, we'd like to think that the world looks like, um, you know, parts of the fountainhead or, you know, the ideals of Atlas Shrugged, this sort of fantasy land. But if you let um, objectivist and social Darwinist um, perspectives actually take control and let it go, you get more of a sort of Congo um, meets India style of, of society. And uh, I think we can, from an ob objective um, standpoint, see which one works better for more people and for, um, if you want to go back and use the words that an objectivist or social, social Darwinist would like to use, you could say that, you know, look objectively at which countries are more productive and effective, and you will see that those are not the societies that um, believe in the social Darwinist type of universe. The most productive and effective countries are those who actually have a very strong socialist component. So, be that as it may, quality of life is also, on average, much higher. That's another debate for another day. So I think we need to refrain from throwing about terms like psychology, which is misused um, by you several times, and um, because psychology doesn't just mean emotional mood swings or emotional state. Psychology is actually, well, look it up in the Oxford English Dictionary. Um, psychology actually stands for a lot of pieces, including your intelligence and the biological aspects, the pure biological aspects of your brain are also included in psychology, not just the emotional aspects. Um, next, um, just to reiterate, also be really careful when tossing around terms like um, productivity and efficiency, because those aren't an end to themselves, and society often breaks down, as we can see in the case of robber barons of the Gilded Age and um, countries today where workers' rights are non-existent or frequently abrogated, that when you look at productivity and efficiency alone, you actually, the system actually starts to break down when the individual human and the larger perspective of society is not built in or um, put at a higher priority than pure productivity and efficiency. So things to think about. Thanks for listening.